Movement, motion. It is everywhere and all around us. The ancient Greeks understood that the cause of the change in a movement conforms to the principle of impetus. Sir Isaac Newton, almost 2,000 years later, expressed it in terms of mathematical equations. The principle of impetus is simply this, that the cause of the change in the movement of a simple object is other objects, not the object itself. The Earth orbits the Sun. The Sun appears to be the cause of its orbit. Light bends toward the Sun. Again, the Sun appears to be the cause. The problem is this. Newton's concept of impetus did not predict the bending of light. Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity predicted it, and the new theory abandoned the concept of impetus. Instead, it predicted the bending of light by treating space and time as though they bend. It was as though the sun is not pulling on the light, that there is no force causing the change in its motion. But what if Newton's impetus and Einstein's bending of space-time were not as different as first believed? In 2021, two scientists discovered, by giving Newton's mathematical equations for impetus and for gravity a sort of upgrade, that the new equations could predict the bending of light. Their theory united Newton's mechanics and Einstein's general theory of relativity. Their first step was to unify the mathematical models of the Earth and light. Instead of modeling the Earth as a particle separated by a void and a point of light as part of an electromagnetic wave, they now modeled both of them as fragments of energy. Distributions of energy that are strongest at their source, radiating outward, diminishing in strength. Next. They replaced Newton's law of impetus, F equals ma, with F equals mk, where k is the curvature of a space-time path. Together with a corresponding upgrade of Newton's inverse square law for gravitation, they now correctly predicted the bending of light around the sun, based on the concept of impetus. To better understand how they did this, let's see what path curvature is. Look at the path of an object moving in space from A to B. The path is a straight line segment, whether the movement is slow, fast, constant, or varying. In space-time, however, we have the additional dimension of time. The path is now straight only when the movement is constant, and it bends only when the movement changes. Path curvature K in space-time tells us how much the space-time path bends and it bends in space-time when speed increases and when a path in space bends. In other words, path curvature in space-time is precisely the counterpart to acceleration in space. Now, let's return to the sun pulling on the light. Per Newton's original hypothesis, the sun pulls on the light with the force F equals ma. The force vector in red and the acceleration vector in blue are toward the sun. Notice that the acceleration vector's tangential component will increase the speed of light in yellow beyond its observed limit. F equals ma does not correctly predict the movement of light. But what happens when we adopt the upgrade, when we use F equals mk instead of F equals ma? At low speeds, the acceleration vector in blue behaves just like the path curvature vector k in purple. Both vectors point toward the sun, and Newton's theory stays intact. At high speeds, when the speed of the object approaches the speed of light, the acceleration vector in blue now rotates. In fact, it becomes perpendicular to the object's movement just as it approaches the speed of light. As a result, the speed of the object ceases to increase beyond the speed of light, and the perpendicular component of the acceleration that remains bends the light toward the sun. It correctly predicts the bending of light. We now understand that the age-old principle of impetus is not obsolete, and that it works for light too. Impetus in space-time unifies Newton's and Einstein's theories. Furthermore, recall that the updated principle of impetus requires a unified concept of substance. The scientists modeled the huge Earth and the tiny point of light, both as fragments of energy. One must wonder, will the fragment of energy someday be able to serve as the building block for subatomic structures too, 
to unite our perceptions of reality across all of its scales,